you show me a Christian who continues to return to his vomit, and I will show you a man who does not know what repentance is. I'd like to have all of you here, our congregation, welcome you into Spirit Life Worship Church Sanctuary. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. How many Christians do you know that say they're sorry over and over and over again for the same mistakes, yet there is really no long-term change? Might that be you? How many Christians profess their love for Christ and for a season you can see a visible change, but then they end up back to their own ugly, destructive patterns? So the other day, I was really thinking about this, praying about this, because it's one of the hardest things for me to deal with. Not personally, but for all the hundreds of people, if not thousands, that I've ministered to over the years. What is going on? And the Lord said one simple word to me. Repentance. And I realized that I hear very few teachings on the topic of repentance. And the ones that I have heard are rubbish. So, if you don't want this pattern to be in your life, I want you to listen up loud and clear because that could be you or it could become you. So I want to talk today about what true repentance is and what true repentance does. Now, let's look at 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 21 through 22. Okay? Could we read this together, please? For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they had known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Verse 22. But as it happened unto them, according to the true proverb, and I'll just insert, he's now quoting from the book of Proverbs, chapter 26, 11, comma, read it with me, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her own wallowing in the mire. He's speaking about Christians not unbelievers. He's speaking about Christians who turn from God again and again and again and again. And he says those believers, he equates to being dogs. Dogs. Who return to their vomit. So it's very graphic because even the thought of vomit can make people vomit. But why would he put this in there so graphically? So I can't candy coat it for you. Why does he compare the state of a man who promised to devote his life to Christ who saw a distinctive change in his lifestyle, who turned from sin, once knew the way of righteousness, and then goes back to the world like a dog returning to vomit. So listen up. Dogs and cats traditionally throw up after gorging themselves 
with food. They don't know when to stop gorging themselves with food. We have a cat that does that all the time. That's why I tell my daughter, just put enough food in the dish for her to eat just a little bite because she doesn't know how to stop. And then in the morning, sometimes when I wake up, usually me, I step out of the bedroom, half asleep, and I step out of the bedroom, and guess what I end up stepping into? And it kind of oozes through my toes and comes up on the top, and it's, yeah, yeah. It's pretty gross. Yeah, yeah, you, all right, I'll, I'll try, I'll try, I'll try to stay off of that part, but it's going to be really hard because, you know, Peter brought it up, amen? So, so, so these animals, they gorge themselves with food and immediately they throw it up because they lack the discipline to know when to stop. Now, if it sounds gross, does this sound gross? Does it sound gross? Good. God says, that is how gross it is. When a man who once walked with me in righteousness turns his back to the world. That is how gross it is to me. Again and again and again and again and again. So, you show me a Christian who continues to return to his vomit... And I will show you a man who does not know what repentance is. I'm going to say it again to you. If that is you, sir, ma'am, young man, young woman, if that is you, it is as gross to God like vomit oozing through the toes of Pastor Mike to him when you continue over and over again and over and over again and over and over again continue back to the same mess you once started in the solution is you sir you ma'am you young man you teenager you do not have a firm grip on what repentance really means but you're going to be accountable for it today because I'm going to show you. So let me ask you all, all of those watching me and all of those in this wonderful church, how long do you plan on being saved? Have you thought about that? Are you on the one-year plan? Anybody thought about that? How about the one-year plan? Are you just leasing? Are you just like, are you just leasing? <laughs> Uh, 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 are you on the five-year plan? Anybody thought about it? Listen, this is forever. Oh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got another one. This is always a good one. Uh, for some believers, it's just a get-out-of-the-hell card. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to use Christ to get out of hell. Well, the reason you keep eating your vomit... You know, that gooey stuff, that yellow gooey stuff that you're getting all disgusted hearing. I want you to get disgusted. You don't know what repentance means because maybe nobody ever told you. And I'm going to tell you. Repentance means this. Making a U-turn. But let me just tell you something that the Lord showed me this morning, for which I changed this entire teaching this morning, about 20 minutes before I came in here. He said to me, repentance is changing the way you think. Amen. That's really what it means. I'll show you in scripture. What happened this morning was very uninteresting. Amen? Amen. So let's look at Acts chapter 3 and verse number 19. Read it with me. Uh, so, come on. Repent ye therefore. 
make sure you pay attention now to where the commas are because this is very important in understanding uh, the premise of what he's saying. Let's read it again. Repent you therefore and be converted, comma, that your sins may be blotted out. So let's go back up. Our sins are blotted out if we repent. Now keep this in mind. He's rebuking, in this chapter, he's rebuking the Pharisees that crucified Christ because they thought of him as, right, a false Christ, false Messiah. They didn't believe he was the Christ, and so they crucified him. P Peter, is, P Paul is saying, repent, change your way of thinking about him. Amen. You got it? And be converted here. Watch, that your sins may be blotted out. And any of you guys, before you got to be like a fruitcake like we all are in this church, you know, really radically saved, did you ever really think that maybe this was really, that this way of worshiping and this way of learning and these kinds of churches were like really far out wacky birds? Did you ever think that before? Did you maybe think that about me one time, Fabian? Yeah, you see, yeah, I know you guys did. Right? But something happened. You changed your way of thinking. I mean, one day I'm a goofball, the next day you can't get enough of me. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. So repent you therefore, change your way of thinking, take a U-turn, be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing your mind is refreshed, shall come from the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen? Amen. So you got it so far, right? Okay, let me tell you what Charles Spurgeon talked, said about repentance. Listen to this. Repentance is a discovery of the evil of sin. Watch now. Pay attention, all of you. Listen. Repentance is a discovery of the evil of sin and a mourning that we have committed it. Watch. It is a resolution to forsake it. Amen. It is, in fact, a change of mind of a very deep and practical character which makes the man love what he once hated and hate what he once loved. Isn't that incredible? That's what it's like to be saved. Listen to what J.I. Packer says about repentance. Repentance means turning from as much as you know of your sin to give as much as you know of yourself to as much as you know of God and as our knowledge grows and these three points, so our practice of repentance has been enlarged. Amen. John Piper says, repenting means experiencing a change of mind that now sees God as true and beautiful and worthy in all of our praise and all of our obedience. Have you been there, church? Amen. This is what repentance is. This is why it's so important. Watch this. Every time you repent of a sin, a lie that once controlled your thoughts is exposed to the light of truth. Isn't that good? I'm going to read it again. Poke the neighbor. Right now, everybody poke your neighbor. Say, listen up. He's going to repeat it again. Somebody's got to poke a bow, though, over there. <laughs> poke him. Come on, poke him. Not that hard. Not that hard. <laughs> He's bleeding over there. Here, here, give him. All right. Here is why in repentance is vital to the believer. See, repentance doesn't mean I'm sorry. Anybody ever thought that before? I'm so sorry, Lord. That's not repentance. Wipe that off of your mind. 
Oh, sweetheart. Have you done that to your husband? Oh, baby, baby, I'm so sorry. And then the next week you do it again. Anybody been there? Repentance is not saying you're sorry. What did I just say? Good. Every time you repent of a sin, are you writing this down? A lie that once controlled your thought life is now exposed in the light of truth. And without repentance, that lie will control you for the rest of your life. Now that deserves an amen. Now that's repentance. He doesn't, thank you. You know, I have him on all of my teachings. I hope you, you ever listen to my sermons online? You can, you can hear angel on every one of them going, preach it, brother. Are you with me so far? Yes, sir. Do I have your attention? Yes. Repentance is not saying you're sorry. Sorry means nothing. Did you hear me? Yes. Sorry means nothing. So here's what the Bible likens sin to. Leprosy. A disease. The Bible actually compares sin to a disease. Read it up for yourself. The disease of leprosy. And anybody who touched somebody with leprosy would catch leprosy. So I want you to liken a behavior that has controlled you to a disease. And like some diseases, some people succumb in a few short months to this disease. Some years, some decades, but I will tell you this, sin will find you out. And without true repentance, this is what the enemy will whisper in your ear. You may have heard this whisper before. Are you ready? It's not so bad. Everybody's doing it. Anybody but me heard that voice? Louis, Louis, uh, me and Louis have heard that voice. It's not so bad. God still loves you. Everybody's doing it. Repentance is a total abandonment from that frame of mind. Watch this. Repentance brings the sin to the light of day. That which was once hid in the darkness of your soul is now broken by the light of God's power. And the power of deception is broken. But the enemy says, don't tell anybody. It's not so bad. What he's not telling you is, this will eventually kill you. This will eventually destroy you. So bring it to the light of day, God says, and I will destroy the devourer who told you that. Do you understand me? I don't care what you folks, other preachers, teach about this. You're just trying to scare people half to death. When a sin remains secret, the enemy says, keep it secret. Do I sound like the enemy here? Is that good? How about this? Keep it secret. The very thing, the very thing that sin promises to give you 
in the end, will be the very thing you once lose. You will lose. I want you to take a look at the book of Ezekiel. Look at Ezekiel 18, verse 30. Therefore, I will judge you, comma, O house of Israel, comma, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God, period. Repent. That word repent means make a U-turn. And turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Repent and turn yourselves away from all your transgressions so that iniquity shall not ruin you. Listen, there is liberty in this room this morning for all those that are listening. So the other day, I told this in part to a young man, and he said, this is exactly what my problem is. I return to my vomit every single day. He said, Pastor Mike, how do I repent? What do I do? How do I do it? Look up here. Get it out of your head. Get it out of your thought life. Repentance is not feeling sorry for yourself. Anybody ever say it to God? Oh God, I'm so sorry. He says, no, you're not. No, you're not. Did you ever hear him say, no, you're not. Repentance is the opposite of tolerance. Repentance is the opposite of tolerance. We live in a tolerant society, don't we? Huh? Everything goes now, doesn't it? Well, how in the world would you repent from something if the world is now telling you that the thing that you once repented for or should repent for is now right to do? My wife was telling me yesterday, a young man watched, watched and put on video, observed a handicapped man drowning in a lake. Watch this man drowning in a lake to his death. And he will not be prosecuted for that because there is no such law written that condemns that action. Yet, people will, will, will risk their lives to save cats and dogs from trees and from burning buildings. But a handicapped man, and there is no prosecution for him. Why would he repent if the law says it's okay? Look at all the lifestyles now we're forced to swallow. The Bible says very clearly what once was considered to be wrong will now be considered to be right. And guess what? We have we have a culture of boys and girls and men and women that have no reason to repent of anything because there's no reason to repent for the sins and the actions they're now living in as right. There's no reason to break the bondage it has on them. Are you awake? Are you listening to me? Amen. Repentance is the opposite of anything goes. And I want to read to you what John the Baptist himself said about repentance. Let me just park here for just a moment. Listen to this in Amplified. Bring forth fruit that is consistent with repentance. Let your lives prove your change of heart. Do not presume to say to yourself, we have Abraham for our fathers, for I tell you, God is able to raise up descendants of Abraham from these stones. The axe is lying at the root of the tree, and every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Amen. In other words, 
Repentance is never over until fruit is brought forth. I think I need to say that again. Can I hear an amen? amen. Say repentance amen. is never over, never over. Until, fruit is brought forth. until fruit is brought forth. Stop saying you're sorry to the woman that you're beating, sir. Sorry, don't cut it no more. When fruit comes forth, then you know your repentance is true. Are you with me? Are you sure you're awake? Cease not from repenting of pride until you delight in humility. Anybody have a pride problem here? Lord, I'm so sorry for acting so prideful. I'm really, I'm sorry. You trying to make her raise her hand back there? <gasps> He's grabbing Stacy's hand and thrusting it up back there. That's terrible. Yeah, Fabian, repent of that sin. But Stacy, this is word is for you here. Watch this. Don't stop repenting of pride as long as he says you have it until you delight in being humbled. How about that? Stop saying you're sorry all the time. Let Fabian see and delight in your humility like him and I. When you're humble like Fabian and me, then you'll know that your repentance is true. Right, Louis? Hallelujah. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Cease not from repenting of an unforgiving heart until forgiving becomes natural to you. Don't keep saying, I'm just so sorry, Lord. I just can't forgive this knucklehead. I'm just so sorry. Stop saying you're sorry. Say, Lord, I will not, I will not stop repenting until I fall in love with this person. Are you catching this? How about impurity? Anybody ever had an impure thought before besides me? One. Two. Okay. Yeah. I am going to kill you, Fabian, when we get out of here. Don't worry, Stacy, nobody's watching. <laughs> Impure thoughts. Anybody been down this road? Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. God, I'm so sorry for that impure thought. And then a week later, a day later, right? Oop, there it comes again, right? Cease not from repenting of impurity until you are pure. How about hatred? Anybody but me ever hate anybody before? <laughs> Stacy's gone like that. See, Stacy's really get. Now, Fabian's doing that to her head, though, too. <laughs> S don't stop repenting until the one you hate becomes the one you love. Then you'll know that your repentance is true. I think I need to repeat that again. Don't say I'm sorry one time. Do not cease repenting of hatred until you love your enemy. Then you'll know that your repentance is true. Who wants to live a holy life in here? There's a bunch of people watching us right now that could care less. But I want to tell you something, sir and ma'am. All that sin, 
all that sin that you're putting makeup over will one day destroy you. God is calling us to lead a holy life. And if you want to live a holy life, keep with repentance until you are holy. And I say this to you in closing because I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I had this vision yesterday when I was studying of getting on my knees in this sanctuary. You don't have to join me, but I think I'm going to get on my knees during the song I'm going to play for you. You're going to love the song. I'm going to play it for you. Look at if if you have not repented of your sins, then you're just fine living in them. And that means you need the Holy Spirit and you need to listen to him. Now listen to me and I'll say this to you. I want you to pay attention. The enemy wants you to think that being saved is a fairy tale journey with lollipops and cotton candy. The enemy wants you to think that you can live and sin and yet still prosper. Everybody's doing it. God will not favor the faith of any man unless the man is in a constant state of repentance. Amen. Amen. Saying sorry will not cut it, but saying, Lord Jesus, I repent of my thinking. I repent of my philosophies. I repent of my actions, my deeds. I repent of my rejection of you. Change the way I think by your Holy Spirit. I turn from my wicked ways and turn towards you, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Put those hands to heaven. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. In the name of Jesus, I release them from the darkness of sin and bring them to the light of day. In Jesus' glorious name. Please go without giving the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Please feel free to contact us at www.spiritlifeworshipchurch.com. Our phone number is 386-586-2202. And our service begins 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Can't wait to see you guys. God bless. God bless. I hope this video was a blessing to you. And if it was, please don't forget to subscribe below and put your comments down there as well. Also, if you are interested in making a donation to this ministry, uh, please go ahead in the description box. There's a link down there for you to make your donation. Also, please check out our website. It's also in the description box as well. May God bless you. Thank you for watching. See you around.